Application Security Weekly delivers interviews and news from the worlds of AppSec, DevOps, and all the other ways people find and fix software flaws. Join us as we explore how the latest news highlights modern security practices or reminds us of the missing ones. We also bring insights from interviews on topics from training to threat modeling, from open source tools to cloud native techniques, plus an occasional reference from new wave to synth wave. Find us at securityweekly.com slash subscribe or look for Application Security Weekly wherever you pick your podcasts. Welcome back to Business Security Weekly. I am your host, Matt Alderman, joined by Jason Albuquerque, Patty O'Reilly, and Rob Fitzgerald. Do you have a specific guest or topic that you want us to cover on one of the shows? Submit your suggestions for guests by visiting securityweekly.com forward slash guest and completing the form. We review suggestions monthly and we'll reach out to you once reviewed. All right, gentlemen, let's get back into our topic. So this second part is the do hard mm. <laughs> part of the segment, which is, I think what we what we came to in the last segment is don't start with controls, understand your risk, quantify risks into, into business dollars, right? Yeah. Get away from risk scores. So the question is, and Patty, I'm going to start with you. Yeah. Like, where do we start? Like, what is a very effective, easy way to start down mm -hmm. a risk quantification path that allows us to start to understand risk as dollar impact, right. not as a risk score? Right, right. Yeah, I love that question. Uh, you know, I, I, and I would say it's starting with a risk model. So something quantitative, right? Uh, like FAIR or some variant of FAIR. Uh, something that allows you to look at likelihood is, uh, you know, this will happen once a year. It'll happen once every five years, you know, once every 20 years. What does that look like? Uh, and use data. So we, you know, when, when we go to companies, we use an actuarial data set. So we grab over a million rows of events across 20 sectors uh, and we look at the data. And then wait, we... Wait a second. Yeah. You mean... You're doing what the insurers have been doing for hundreds of years. Yes. You're actually yes. using actuarial yes. data. It turns out there's actually, I know when I, I, I had a conversation at Gartner, I'd had a guy come in and say, it's, you know, there's cyber risk management's not going to happen. It's never going to happen. I'm like, are you kidding me? He's like, uh, you can't model weather systems. And I'm like, you don't, you don't model weather systems in order to, in order to ship things across the ocean. Use actuarial data. Mm -hmm. How many ships sank out of a thousand, right? Yep. That's what you look at. Uh, so that's how we start, you know, and that's, I think the way to start, it gets over the religious conversation. It gets over the finger in the air and everyone looking confused. It gets over people going in and saying there is a likelihood and then everyone's shooting at them and saying, you know, mm -hmm. where did you get that? You know, we got it from a data set across 20 sectors that looks at company size and revenue. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's a start. Then what are you looking at when you have say 15 vectors analyzed that way, ransomware, DDoS, et cetera. You're looking at the security control groupings that relate to those things, right? So I think we're all in security. We all know pretty much what a ransomware profile looks like. You know, the, the feds published a beautiful thing called the ransomware profile. <laughs> uh, you know, so we know which controls out of those 1,007 uh, or so apply to ransomware. Guess what? It's not 100. It's, it's more like 10, you know, big ones, you know, to look at, right? And then among those, you can do a little analysis on which are highest impact for your organization, right? So I think you, you start the conversation by saying, look, risk has historically been calculated by finance, insurance for hundreds of years using likelihood and impact. And we can do the same thing in cyber. Um, I used to say that years ago, and cyber people would sort of say, that's just not going to, that's not <laughs> yeah, going to work. Mean, look, for y I've been doing this since 96. So what, I'm 27 <laughs> years into this, right? Yeah. We always thought we were so unique that we had to come up with our own risk models, our own risk scores. And what has it gained us? Not Nothing. No. Not much at all. No. Like when I look back at my career and I look at Control Path and Archer and all the things I, I trans you kind of transpire through. Everybody had a, a a component of risk, even where I, uh, you know, uh, uh, um, living security, the human risk. Uh, we all had our risk scores, yeah. but where we, where we just couldn't make the final connection was so what yeah. the, so yeah. what I have a risk score. So what, but if you start with actuarial David, uh, you take historical events and you can actually calculate a dollar value right. 
that's a complete game changer because we haven't been able to do that in like forever. Right, right, right. <laughs> forever. And forever, yeah. I mean, uh, that's, you know, it, it's, it, the business wants to see what are the possible impacts, you know, and, and then security people can contextualize what they do inside that data, you know, and that's really how I see companies getting the quickest time to value, starting there. That's how they are doing it. Uh, you know, some practices are very mature. Uh, you know, they're doing hundreds, if not thousands of assessments, but they want to understand what they're doing in, in terms of risk ranking at all. Yeah. And I think that's important. I'm still going to harken back to the asset management side. Yeah, because simply yeah, there's, because right. there's more that's, to this. Yeah. The, next, no, the, next the next part. The next yeah. question is, where is the risk within our environment? Right. Right. <laughs> right. And if you can't articulate that, how can you remediate? Right. Yeah. So you have to be able to articulate that. Well, I think that's the journey we're all on now. Yeah. Now, if you've started with risk, understanding which assets fall into scope, right? You've mm -hmm. got different, different sets of asset data out there. Some are good. Some are slow. Some are not updating, right? Um, so you really have to, it, it, it calls into question the asset, but which assets, right? Mm -hmm. The critical assets, right? It's not every asset in creation. It's not every IP that's hanging out there that's some ghost IP. It's the critical ones. And again, that's risk ranking the asset sure, discussion sure. as well. So right. you're folding that risk rank it, it's, asset It's asset set. classification that's at right. that point. You have to, you have to see the assets, you have to classify the assets, right. and then you put the risk against them. Right. Well, well and right. I think that's a great point because it's not about just locking down everything. Mm -hmm. I, I actually mm -hmm. have been saying for the past few years, I think we as an industry should be looking at how the U.S. prison system is run and how they manage these big prisons and because there's, there's very few people on the warden side, on the guard side, yep. on the hospital yep. side. You have to figure out where is it important, where isn't it, where isn't it important. And quite frankly, th my opinion, people don't do this. Start with the end in mind. Mm -hmm. Start with the end in mind. Where do we want to be? What does it need to look like? And who's managing it? Because this is the other piece, right? We're, we're concerned about a talent shortage right now in cybersecurity. With boomers starting to retire, cash out on their 401ks, whatever, it's, we're going to go off a cliff very mm -hmm. soon. So how are we going to manage that? Policies, people, tools. And the tools, quite frankly, are the least of the concern. That comes at the end. Yeah. Tools come at the end. Well, it should come at the end. Should, it should yeah. come at the end, but usually people buy them at the it's beginning. It's because it's the easy button. Say uh, easy, do hard. They yeah. think they're getting an easy button. It's, Has it worked? Have we no. really moved the needle? Have we found a silver <laughs> bullet in this market <laughs> yet? Really 30, in 30 years? No. No? no. no? I, it was funny. I, was, uh, I interviewed uh, Jess Byrne from Forrester. It was a, a segment on the golden age of email mm -hmm. security. Right. Do you remember I, that I, one? I I'm like, I do. We haven't solved email security in 30 years. I wouldn't no. call it the golden age. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Definitely would not. All right. So we start with actuarial data. We start to identify risks that impact my business. I think then we've got two tangents that have to come into play. One is controls to mitigate the risk to understand where I need to make investment, I think right yeah. from a security investment perspective but number two i have to correlate that to assets mm -hmm. so that i'm also prioritizing the right critical assets and that's where these three things get really really interesting to me because asset management's been forgotten about for a long time a long 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 time right. and now you're seeing kind of this resurgent of asset manager asset management axonius jupiter one etc right right even yeah. qualis doing their asset management system so Those are the tools, though. I know, that the tools. doesn't give you I the know. elbow grease to get it done. I, I, I know. <laughs> it, but, but they're sitting over in a corner, Jason. Like Again, the technology comes last. Mm -hmm. The technology has to come last. You have to do the diligence. You have to find all these rogue assets that are out there. Right. You have to classify them. Sit down with the business units and decide where the highest risk is. Who's going to know better than the feet on the street? Those business units of where there's risk. That's where the partnership comes into play. That's where those discussions come into play. And now you're starting to classify it. Then get a great nifty tool that you can put all those assets into. Right, right, right. But understand your landscape. Start some type of an initiative to start understanding what you have. And I can't stress enough, it's not just your technology. It's the people. It's the vendors. Yeah. It's the oh, yeah. contractors. It's all of the above. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, when I started in this space, when I had this crazy idea to build a product, it was all about third-party vendor management. Mm -hmm. I was managing, uh, for one, the large national banks or third-party risk program. 70,000 vendors. Yeah. 
Yeah. Right. 70,000 vendors. How? That, how? Insane. You know how? <laughs> I'll tell you how. I had to go out and run. First of all, I had to go out and run a risk assessment. First, I had to find them all. So who has the list? Well, procurement has the list, of course, because that's who they're getting paid somewhere, right? So I had to go to procurement yep. to find the list. And then we set up a four-tier risk assessment process. Mm -hmm. The first tier was no risk, right? We actually created a category of no mm -hmm. risk where we they didn't have access to data. So we're like, look, we don't even really have to assess them. This was like the landscaping companies, et cetera, mm -hmm. right? We created mm -hmm. a no list category and just put them over yeah. in a bucket. Then we had to go out and do a risk assessment with the business units. The business units, back to your point, Jason, what do they have access to? Are exactly. they internet facing? Aren't they internet facing? Then we risk rank them, right? Do they have access to our clients. Exactly, our <laughs> client data, <laughs> like social security numbers. Hello, anybody? Mm -hmm. And so we ranked them. And if you were low risk, we just sent all of them what we called the low risk letter. Yeah, we yeah. said, hey, We've classified you as low risk. Here's our baseline set of, of requirements we think you should meet. Boom, we sent it to them. We called it yeah. good. A test that you're doing it. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I had to manage all the mediums and highs with yeah. Excel spreadsheet and email. Oh, <laughs> my God. Oh, oh, my gosh. Wow. But that's how we did it. Right. Mm -hmm. Right? That was the only mm -hmm. way to do it. So now you take that beyond. You're looking at people. Mm -hmm. You're looking at systems. You're looking at data sources. This problem's only gotten harder, but is a requirement. Because if we don't understand where that data yeah. is, and we don't understand who those people are, how are we ever going to get our arms around the right controls right. to address the right risks? Yeah, challenging. It is. That's itself. the do hard part, it for is. sure. It is the do yeah. hard part. Yeah. But yeah. that's where it becomes like, so now I'm going to jump for a quick second. I remember using the Excel sheets and the emails and the phone calls and the Excel sheets and the emails mm -hmm. and the Excel sheets. Yeah. And one of the problems that we have had historically is what I consider risk and what you consider risk are different. And there's no way I might say, oh, this is a high risk. You might say this is a low risk for the exact same thing, even within sure. the same company, mm -hmm. right? And this has been a battle so many times in doing assessments. And, it, and it's one of these things where I'm not actually sure CISOs or CIOs should be doing anything more than presenting what the facts we are. We should be and facilitating the conversation. Thank you. Right? Thank facilitating you. Facilitating the conversation, and then you have the business unit <clears throat> leader and maybe the CFO duke it out. Ex exactly. <laughs> right. And organizing it in a panel that is, yeah. that is independently controlled, because I've also seen a number of chief exec it's, uh, CIOs and CISOs change things depending on whether they're giving it to the CFO, whether they're giving it to audit. I've seen this happen so many times and it's discouraging yeah. that the 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 integrity level isn't isn't there. And it's well, they won't understand this. They don't need to see this whatever else. And it's like the great thing about the new ecosystem with a risk platform is Everyone sees it and everyone can see, everyone that matters sees it and everyone can see who changed what or yeah. where you are in your progression. Mm -hmm. Just if it's simply like, here, we don't have MFA in place. Oh, hey, now we do have MFA in place or whatever it is. Sure. Right. And I think that's the other part is the, the integrity of the information that's being presented. Yeah matters yeah it matters i think i think we have to do a better job of again leaving the ego at the door and not being afraid to say business unit leader cfo i need your help mm -hmm. i can't do this by myself mm -hmm. do you know how many times i've had that conversation i'm the CISO. i'm the cio i'm the coo mm -hmm. i don't understand it to the level of your business unit i need your help let's talk through this let's have a conversation let's come up with a consensus and now as a business we have a decision yeah. collaboratively right you sound like enterprise risk management for a minute is that is that where we're going like <laughs> well or integrated right. risk management right. is, is the new term is the new right. term right that's exactly right that's right, that's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it, and it's it, it's funny because we actually talked about this at the, at the cyber strong i had john wheeler and jeff recor and i'm right. like is is risk management dead look at the analysts yeah. There's not a risk management quadrant anymore. No. <laughs> it's all gone. It's yeah. like, wait a minute. What happened to risk management? We used to have one for third party. We used yeah. to have one for enterprise risk. We used to have one for yeah. GRC. They're all gone. Yeah. No, it, 
it's 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 crazy and i when i was at gartner i asked the analysts that we talked to i said where's the cyber risk management uh you know paper you guys were saying you were going to publish and they're like we can't do it i'm like well what's going on so we got we got a junior analyst and allison and i sort of cornered them and said what, what's really going on and they're like the second we announce that there's a cyber risk management quadrant more or less it's it's going to mean that everyone's in the game Everyone, right. yeah, everyone's going to claim. So it's everybody's just going to be a food yeah. fight, right? Yeah. And you can understand that. That doesn't mean, and they're trying to figure it out, and they will figure it out. But <laughs> at some point, you're you're going to. It, it doesn't mean that cyber risk management doesn't exist. It does exist, uh, and it's a it's a you know it's a set of practices and a set of protocols, and it's getting better. And the market has matured somewhat. And a lot of the conversations I'm in are cyber risk management conversations. They just are. Um, so I, I think in some ways the quadrant might show up two, three years down the line, which makes sense. But uh, nonetheless, the practice does exist. It's <laughs> typical for Gartner. They're always uh, a, a, a few years late. <laughs> defining, <laughs> Is there, defining a market. But, but you said something earlier, Patty, that yeah. I, I really liked, right? Like, is there a way that we look at cyber risk management from a financial risk management standpoint? Yeah. And instead of there being a cyber risk quadrant right there's a financial cyber or cyber finance risk quadrant where am i am i no crazy no here? i think, like, no, I, I think like, that's actually like, the, the like, way to look at it i mean i think i think cyber risk is financial risk uh it it has to snap into the old ways of analyzing risk it does it has to snap it, into the way the it, business it, is the, analyzing the, the, risk. the way the business is managing the risk <laughs> for hundreds the of years right. conversation. so that's I, I, you mean with I think actuaries it's just that the whole yeah. you know the whole mm -hmm. fog of mm -hmm. it that we've you know brought in unfortunately over time uh, you know, has to go away. So I, I used to talk about it as translation layers. So like you can start with machine language, then you can get to control language, yeah. then you can get up to, you know, sort of business logic language. And then you have to, you eventually have to arrive at dollars and cents. You have mm -hmm. to translate all the way across that to dollars and cents. I really see it as sort of a translation exercise. You know, and cyber's growing up in a way, right? Instead of talking about all the tooling, all the endpoints, we're actually talking about adjusting that stuff based on what the money says, what the business says, right. what the business wants, what the business needs. Mm -hmm. It's reaching back in to the, it's infrastructure, you know, and business understands infrastructure. Right. You have a risk of flooding. You, you do things, you sandbag it. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you, or you pay a higher premium in your that's insurance right. you to cover it. it. That's you right. transfer it. See what, what I'm, what I struggle with, with others in the security industry is it doesn't matter what you want. The business has three decisions when it comes to risk management. Mm -hmm. I can mitigate it, accept it, or transfer it. Mm -hmm. And there will be times when the amount of money it costs to fix it is less than the exposure, and they'll decide to do nothing. But that is a legitimate risk management decision. Yes. Right? And, and it's, I, I don't know how organizations can justify budgets when they can't tie the spend back to a risk reduction or a revenue gain, mm -hmm. because that's the analysis that the CEO and the board's mm -hmm. going to make. And the CFO, obviously, yeah. is X greater than Y or not. And then I'm going to make my decisions. Like, mm -hmm. But we're not there. We're not mature enough quite as an industry. You said we're maturing. And I do, look, I think the financials have been doing this long enough, Patty, yeah. that they have a pretty good, robust risk management program in place. Their risk management, their financial risk platform probably looks at cyber as a pillar in it. Yeah. But the rest of the industry is still not quite there. Not yeah. quite. No, I agree. Not quite. But there's a great opportunity there. And I think, I think when I talk to not their uh, establishments and, and, and uh, executives, they know they're not there. And, and they're trying to get there. And they state it explicitly. Yeah. yeah. And I think what we have to be able to do is enable yes. this education, continue the teachings of how do you get there? Because there's so many industries that just don't have the maturity with this mm -hmm. that just need help. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like we just, we need to almost create the blueprint. Start here. Use this data to identify this and this and bring it all together. Jason, you were talking about um, uh, the business side and, yeah. and ranking stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Has anybody done a business impact analysis lately? Right. Like, is that a dead practice? Like, that's how we did <laughs> it back I'll, in I'll the tell day. You, it's mm -hmm. not a dead practice where no. I am. 
No, we see Absolutely it. Not. Yeah. Oh, good. We see it. Yeah. Good. Because yeah. I don't, I don't hear people talking about doing business impact <laughs> analysis. Yeah. Like, we're just like, oh, we got, we got to go throw this control in place. But what's the impact of the business? Right. Like, I, I just, it almost seems like a lost art. Uh, I hope it's not a lost art. <laughs> and if it is. <laughs> People step up, <laughs> bring it back. Let's make, let's make it cool again, right? <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, I remember walking in um, when we did one of our assessments. Um, w when we had this idea to do a startup, yeah, gosh, that was like 2004, right? Mm -hmm. One of the first things we did is we walked in there, we broke down the entire org structure, all the business units. We did a business impact analysis mm -hmm. so we could understand where the critical business functions were. So then when we did the asset piece, we, we could understand which assets were tied into yeah. those parts of the business, right? Back to asset management. Sure. But it was a correlation of the criticality of the asset to the criticality of the business function. Right. So that we could put appropriate controls in place to mitigate the risk. And classify the risk. Yes. Classify it. Yeah. Because now you have proof of concept of what that risk truly is. Now you can go to the CEO. Now you can go to the board and say, we've actually tested this out. And this is the risk that it presents to, the, to our organization. Is it resilience risk? Maybe, right? Is it cybersecurity risk? Maybe. Is it data? Well, but how can you articulate it if you're not going through these steps? But it's it's the hard things to do. Yeah. And it's not sexy. It's not cool. <laughs> Asset management is not sexy. <laughs> Business impact analysis is not sexy. You have to take a weekend and actually bring stuff down sometimes, right? And oh, see how God. it's going to impact. <laughs> Who the hell wants to do that these days? No, nobody wants to do that. Who wants to have round tables and tabletop exercises and really test theories out? It's the hard thing to do. Yeah. But we need to be doing it. I know. We're not going to move the needle if we don't. I know. But, okay, how do we convince mm -hmm. the CFO to yep. spend the money on doing that, on on doing the tabletops that need to happen, right? On testing the different plans sure. that sure. we need to do. Because again, let's tie it back to the business. Mm -hmm. We have these great things that we we say we can do or that we build for our client internally, yeah. our client organizations, and then Oh, that's great. Yep, we'll shelve this. And it just sits as shelfware. Yeah, I mean, I mean, in all honesty, it's it can be as simple as a conversation and being a little bit vulnerable and saying, Mr. and Mrs. CFO, I need your help with something. I have this ecosystem that I don't understand what the impact to our business would be. I would like to do a tabletop exercise so we can better understand the risk, the impact that this will have if things go sideways. I need your help. Can you help me influence that business unit, unit leader? Can you help me influence that? So we can sit around the table. We can do it as a lunch and learn. Let's grab lunch together and just talk through scenarios. Mm -hmm. right? And then you can take it to the next level. We have to be building the trust. And as soon as we start building the trust, we have better influence on the business. One of the easiest ways to build trust is to ask for help. That's I it. need help. Mm -hmm. Be vulnerable. You to can exactly be it. Be vulnerable. 100%. <clears throat> because we've had a pretty negative view of security over the few <laughs> decades, right? Oh, there you're just going to come in and tell me I can't do something. You know, we were the department of no. But if we flip that, right? And we say, mm -hmm. no, 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 we're not here to say no. We're here to just learn. We want to understand what's critical. How, how are these systems run? Where's all your critical? I want to help you grow the business, right? We mm -hmm. just have to change the way we're having the conversation. It I is, think. it is. We want to help this organization be resilient, resilient to cyber attacks, resilient to data breaches, right? Resilient to the human side where we can have insider threat. An insider threat can be something that isn't even meant to happen. It could be an intern who accidentally did something. Yeah. We need to better understand the impact of the business. I need your help. Help me do that. Help me understand that. It could be that simple. Could be that simple. And, and that I think, starts that starts now yeah. the program. I, I think what Patty started with, with what you just said, is kind of the key to this segment, right? Which is baseline yourself based on historical mm -hmm. actuarial data. Use that as a way to go have a conversation with the CFO and the business units to understand, does that apply to us? And if it does, what are the critical assets in these areas that we have to protect? And use that as kind of your blueprint mm -hmm. to peel back this onion from risks down to controls to assets and get your arms around this. I think that's a really good recipe sure. as a starting point. Absolutely. You know, we, 
we always poke fun at the CFO or the CEO who see us walking down the hall or catch us on a Teams meeting, and the first thing they say are, are we secure? And we laugh at that. Ah, what do you mean, are we secure? <laughs> Come on, you're just a crazy CEO. It's not a bad thing to say, I don't know, and I need your help figuring that out. Yeah. Right? Right. <laughs> A if you don't have the visibility and you don't have the information you need and you can't get the business unit leaders on board for this, answer the question, I don't know. And here's why I don't know. You want to see a CEO flip all of a sudden? You want to see a, see a CFO eyes light up and go, what do you mean you don't know? Why don't you know? You're the CISO. Why don't you know? Well, here's why. I can't get business unit leaders on board. I can't get them to do tabletop exercises. I can't get the help to classify the assets within this organization so I can identify the risk. Open up. Open up. It's okay to be vulnerable. It's okay to say, I don't know. <laughs> it is. And, but you I don't, really don't, and you're faking it. Yeah, I know. You're faking it if you I, say you're secure. <laughs> yep. I, I'm just curious how many CISOs are actually going to say, I don't know. <laughs> I've said it. That's I know you impact. have. I know you have. Been there, done that. Yeah, I, I know mean, you have. It's, it's reality. I will say I've said it too, but it is, it's unique. It's, yeah. it's unique. And in fact, if you even look across, try to convince someone, the VP of sales, the CRO, the CFO to say, I don't know. Most of most people struggle because sure. they feel like they're being paid for their knowledge. Right. And right. so when you say, oh, I don't know, you're opening up at the same time, Jason, it is a hundred percent effective when you, when you draw people in because it gets them to be concerned. I mean, I remember I started a funny little story. I worked for a period of time for a uh, computer chip manufacturing company. Mm -hmm. And when I came in, they had never had a CISO before. And initially, my, my nickname with yeah. many, of the, many of the designers and this and that was Nancy Reagan. And I'm like, Nancy Reagan? And they're like, just say no. You're going to say no to everything. You're going to shut this down. Like, and I'm like, no, I want to say oh, yes. So I'm going to say yes to as much as I can. Yeah. We just have to understand what we're doing, right? For all like, the young folk out there, it's just say no to drugs. Just so right. you understand what we're talking about. <laughs> I, I hate that but, you but just the, had to say that. But there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a big difference between saying, I don't know, shrug your shoulders, walk away. Mm -hmm. Two, I don't know, but I really wish I did. Yeah. And right. I need your help. Yeah. Because <laughs> I, I don't know, and it's really bothering me, and I need to know. Yeah. We need to know. Collectively, we need, yeah. we need to know. Yeah. The, the success of the business relies on understanding mm -hmm. financial impact to the business. And it behooves us as security leaders to figure that out. That's right. You hired me to do a job, and I have so many blind spots. I need your help. Help me get these roadblocks out of the way. Help me get visibility into the blind spots. I can't do it by myself because this is a big business with a lot of business units, a ton of personality, and hey, politics. Help. Yeah. That is a great way to end this segment. Help. Go ask for help. Mm -hmm. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me on this segment today. Thank you, everyone, for watching and listening. We'll see you next week on Business Security Weekly.